<laughs> hey, what's up everyone? So too lazy to do video editing. So we're doing one recording my face. Uh, and in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, Purism laptops. This is actually a question I get a whole lot. So for people who don't know, Purism is this company out there that uh, sort of portrays himself as selling free and open source hardware and software. They have these laptops, Purism laptops. I think they're called the Librem whatever. Uh, you can check out their website. It's puri.sm. Um, so they're an interesting company. They're really into this stuff. They want to produce like totally free laptops and make a business out of it, basically. So a lot of people, uh, because they're so well advertised nowadays, they become a, become a big thing. I get a lot of questions about purism. Uh, like, what do I think about the company? Do I recommend the laptops? Yada, yada, yada. Um, so first off, um, I'm not, this isn't going to be a review of Purism laptops because I don't own one. I can't tell you the specifics. Um, but based on what I know about the company, based on what I know about the hardware, I just wanted to give you some comments on it. Um, so as to the main question, do I recommend Purism laptops to people who want to just have a totally free system? Um, to that question, if I had to give a binary answer, it would have to be no. Uh, and there are a couple reasons for that. Now, this isn't going to be a negative video on purism. Uh, in fact, I might even have a, a little helpful advice for those of you who might be connected to the company. Um, but let me explain explain why my answer is no. Okay. So first off, one thing that purism will admit is that purism laptops they don't actually live up to their name. Okay. They're not pure in the sense that they do have a free operating system. Uh, they do. They run a variety of GNU Linux that's 100% free. It's basically like the FSF approved distros. Um, so that's totally good. Um, but they have. They don't have a totally free BIOS. Or even though they use Core Boot, they still have remnants of the Intel management engine. So for those of you who don't know, the Intel management engine is the bane of modern computing. All Intel, com you know, processors since when like 2011 have this management engine, all i5s, i7s, stuff like this. Um, and basically, it is an extra processor that can look in your RAM, can do all these malicious things, can send your data over the internet, and it can actually do a lot of things we don't even understand. We only sort of understand a little bit of what, what the different modules might do. Um, so Purism laptops have not gotten rid of this management engine. It's not something that people in the free software community have overcome yet. Now, for earlier processors, like the Intel Core 2 Duo, um, that you can have a totally free computer with. You can totally get rid of the management engine. So in the other room, I have a Libre booted X200, uh, and that is totally devoid of the management engine. This computer right here, this is the X220 ThinkPad, um, you, it's not actually fully Libre bootable. You, you can do what you can do with purism laptops you can put core boot on this you can run what's called the management engine cleaner and that gets rid out of rid of like 80 percent of the management engine but not the the core components which you know we still don't necessarily fully understand what they do okay um so that's sort of where we are now purism laptops as i said they're not really 100 percent pure to their name in the sense that um they are not a hundred percent free now I'm not making perfect the enemy of good. Uh, Purism laptops are much better than just having a random Acer lab laptop or something like that, or having some kind of Mac device. Uh, they're much better than that. But the elephant in the room is that Purism charges something like, you know, a thousand and a half dollars for these laptops. Um, so like a uh, uh, fifteen hundred dollars, uh, which is a lot of money. Um, now, part of that I understand because Purism is not just a company, it's a startup that wants to make effects in the field. So a lot of that enormous price is going to people who are trying to get rid of the management engine or develop other technologies. So if you're buying a Purism laptop, buy it for that reason partially. Um, but in terms of if you just want a free computer, like I just want a free computer and I want to you know, do my thing on it, Purism laptops are not a good choice for that. Um, so the, the two things are, you one, you can have a 100% free laptop if you go with one that has an Intel Core 2 Duo. Uh, and those of you who have asked me before will know, I totally think that modern processors are extremely overrated. Um, I really get the same kind of performance out of an Intel Core 2 Duo that I do of an i7. I don't play games, that might be why, but uh, I, I think the 
the celebration of modern processors is just pathetic sometimes. It's almost, uh, they're, they're not all they're chucked up to be. Um, so that's one thing. So you can have a 100% free device, but if you think purism is free enough, you can get a device like this. And, and so this is uh, Intel, or excuse me, uh, a ThinkPad X220, right? I bought this thing for $90 on eBay. Uh, you can get refurbished ones for around 200 or so. Usually, I think, I think the median is probably 150 or so, uh, which is a tenth of the price of the Purism laptop. Uh, you can install Core Boot on these. You could buy, buy them with Core Boot already on them, uh, and that would help you out even more. Um, so you can get a, a computer like this for a small piece of the price, and you can have it just as free as the Purism computer. Um, in every respect, you can put 100%, you can put Core Boot on it, you can run the uh, management engine cleaner, you can put 100% free GNU Linux distro, whatever you want. Um, so in that respect, Purism laptops aren't necessarily special. Um, again, this thing here is just as good. Um, so that's one of the reasons I, I think that the free software element, again, well, to restate what I said earlier, if you want to get a Purism laptop, do it partially because you want to support their company for their social goals or whatever. Um, not necessarily because they're good deals. Now, if you want a 100% free computer, there are lots of little companies that do them. There are lots of people who sell on eBay. I got my X200 from just some random guy who was Libre booting stuff on eBay. But there is Mini Free which is closely related to Libreboot. They sell free computers. Taurinus, they're Vikings, uh, Viking something. I don't know what their organization's actually called, but there are a lot of different uh, companies that actually sell 100% free devices um, or core booted devices. You can look for those as well. Um, so that, that's one point. Now, my other point is more generally about what Purism as a company is doing. Uh, which I'm again, I'm not against. I think it's totally great that they're out here and doing these things and popularizing the ideas. Um, and I, I'm not, if you come away from this video thinking, thinking this is like anti purism, it absolutely isn't. Um, but there's another field of the battle for end user freedom. Uh, and there's a, a, and this field, I don't think purism is fighting very well on. That is, they're doing great in the free software stuff. They're selling mostly free computers, which are good. Um, it's good to get that out there. It's good to have basically normal people talking about it. Um, but the other side of the corn, other side of the corn, the other side of the coin is that of uh, sort of modular computers. Um, and, you know, having computers that aren't based on, well, let me put it this way. So traditionally computers are made just by some company, okay? They put them all together. Uh, they sell them. Uh, if you want your computer repaired, you have to go, go to a specialist. Uh, some com uh, companies like Apple are very picky about that. They want, they develop their hardware uh, to be difficult to manipulate. You want to go to approved vendors and stuff like this. Uh, and they make it very difficult for you to modify your computers. Now, one of the exceptions to that historically has been the old ThinkPads. This is one of the reasons ThinkPads are a big deal uh, because ThinkPads aren't really aimed to random people. They were originally aimed to corporations uh, that wanted to have long lasting laptops that you could repair, you know, over the course of years and years. Uh, so that's one of the reasons things pads are good. Now, purism laptops, I think if anything, should be going towards that old ThinkPad like style in the sense that so if you look at the Purism laptop, which again, I don't physically have, but I've seen a lot of reviews and I can tell you what it, you know, generally what it looks like. If you want to open it up, you go on the back, you unscrew everything. That allows you to change the RAM, that allows you to change, you know, the hard drive and, and whatever. Now, these classic ThinkPad computers, if I want to change my hard drive, I just unscrew this one thing, pull it out, now the hard drive's out. If I want to change my RAM, I just unscrew these two things, open it up, there it is. Uh, and that sounds like a minor point. Um, but there are a lot of things that purism could be doing that I think a lot of people actually really want. Uh, they want to have computers that you can very easily take to the store and the, you know, even if you don't know anything about repairing them to the, them yourself, hopefully you can do that if you, you know, you're into computers, but you know, you also want to make laptops, which any, any jackass could repair if you brought them to their store. Um, and even more than that, uh, I think there are there are a lot of startup ideas. So one of the one of the biggest out there, which I really think is the direction that computers are going to have to move in, is the uh, what's it called? I wrote it down. 
the EOMA 68. Okay, so if anyone hasn't heard about these, I, I should probably actually do a video on these as well. Um, but there's this little startup, which is much smaller than Purism. And what they're doing is they're creating laptops which are partially 3D printable. Uh, and the other part is made out of basically renewable materials. So these laptops uh, are made part, partly out of bamboo sl little slips that you put in. Uh, they're partially 3D printed. And you might say, oh, 3D printed? I don't have a 3D printer. Who has a 3D printer? Well, the, the point is you don't have to rely on one company, let's say Lenovo, to you know, manufacture your um, you know, device. Uh, if something breaks on your device, you can just go to anyone in the world who has a 3D printer and they can print it out really easily. Uh, so I don't have a printer, but I can go to my university and pay them a little money and they can print out, you know, um, whatever part I need for that computer. Um, so, uh, so that, you know, if you have a paradigm like that, the production is very decentralized and that's something i think that purism and other kind of companies should be aiming for you want to be in a position where end users can you know you you want to have computers that last last for indeterminate amounts of time like if something breaks i can repair it or i can get someone else to repair it like now you know these uh, eoma computers or whatever um you know anyone who has a 3d printer can say i know i now have a computer manufacturing business where uh, you can come and give me your broken computers and I can fix them. Um, and the other thing about the EOMA whatever computer is that they, and again, this is something I think Purism and other companies should look at, is they really, they're really aiming toward long-term computing in that uh, the EOMA is actually, on one side there's the shell of the computer, so there's a laptop, um, but the actual computer is a little, uh, I guess, slip thing that fix, fits in your wallet that has a processor, it has a hard drive, and you just slip it right into your laptop and use it. Or you can take it out and put it in the desktop. Or if you need a, a new computer, uh, you don't have to replace the whole laptop. You just replace this little uh, you know, slip. Uh, or if the laptop breaks, you don't have to worry about the slip. Now, this is the kind of manufacturing that I think startups should be aiming for in that you want to be able, uh, you want everything to be little pieces that you can put together. Um, you want manufacturing to be as decentralized as possible. And so my advice to purism, uh, this, this is, sounds like it's not even relevant to purism, but it's not just advice for purism, it's advice for other startups. Um, go in that direction. Try and make production as decentralized as possible. Um, now, granted, these companies are motivated by profit motive, partially. Um, I know there's a, you know, there's a lot of wanking about, oh, God, you know, we're, we're all about, we have social purpose and blah, blah, blah. But they, they still need to make a kind of profit. And it's not necessarily good to just say, okay, here's the blueprints for all of our stuff. But I think people who are genuinely motivated by that kind of stuff should be making computers uh, that, you know, are... You know bits and pieces that any kind of person any person can sort of put together and that's i think um you know the direction we should be moving in we shouldn't be making monolithic computers which come as one big thing well they, they want to come as one big thing um but they're made out of different pieces that you can replace if you don't like it if or if it breaks or something else and really any repair shop uh could put together a computer based on these parts um, so anyway, that, that's my idea. So it's a very long review of uh, Purism laptops, or um, I guess my thoughts about them. So again, I don't disrecommend them. I, I don't say don't buy Purism laptops. I think you should buy them if you're interested in supporting the startup uh, or other people who are interested in free software. Um, but that's my advice for not just Purism, but other companies who are interested in really increasing end user freedom. That is. Uh, they're doing good in free software. Purism is doing good with respect to free software. But I'd like to see them and other people be more interested in, you know, really uh, making it easy to modify computers and fix them because we don't want to be reliant on manufacturing companies and assembly lines for all life. You know, you want, now that we have materials like 3D printers or, you know, this kind of reproducible stuff, that's the direction that computer manufacturing should be moving into. Now, there are still components like CPUs that might not be possible for, uh, but we're moving in that direction, and I think uh, people should embrace it. Um, so anyway, I guess that's about it. So throw your comments if you have any. Uh, that's my uh, review. So see you next time.